Dear Boomers, today I want to um, explore what I would call the compliments that people give you that reinforce ageism. We, um, I'm reading a book called Unmasking Ageism, which is very comprehensive, and I thought, well, she touches upon this subject of how people will look at you and give you a compliment that is absolutely insulting about your age, even though it's not meant to be insulting and people mean well. The book explains the stereotypical uh, ideas and prejudices that often accompany aging, that offer, and it offers strategies to dismantle these biases and foster a more inclusive society for people of all ages. That's very important. So we need to um, end racism in our society, but the only way to do it is to look within ourselves for these biases. Uh, th this is um, something that we often look outside of ourselves and, and see the problems in society. We see the problems with aging or, or, or age or youth-related ageism. But we don't. But we seldom realize that some of this is, you know, you got it. If you spot it, you got it. So let me just talk about some of the compliments that I have run into, and I'm sure you have too. And, and like I said, people mean well, but what they are displaying by these comments are unconscious ageist biases. Here's one: You look great for your age. Or you haven't aged since I saw you, you know, ten years ago. You look great. You're so active for someone your age. You're not like older people. And then we always say, "Thank you," and then, and you think to yourself, "I wish she hadn't have said that." <laughs> or we say to the young people, "You're too young to understand." Well, they actually probably understand a lot better than. I do because they're really tuned into the culture. You're aging so gracefully. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> you still have all your faculties intact. You can string one sentence together, two sentences together, three sentences together, and uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> You're so youthful for your age. Thank you. You don't look your age at all. Well, I'll never forget one of the, um, the great feminists of our time was told that she didn't look her age, and I think it might have been actually 53 or something like that, and she says, that is what 53 looks like. I think it was Gloria Steinman that said that, yes. This is what 53 looks like. Damn it. <laughs> you're too young to be doing these sorts of things, or you're too old to be flying out of a plane or, or learning how to fly a plane or how to ride a bicycle, or you're just too old or you're too young and too young or too old. And you're thinking to yourself, okay. <laughs> and you're aging like fine wine. And I don't know if I want to age like fine wine, but apparently a lot of people do. They reinforce, they reinforce stereotypes, these comments. You're still so sharp for your age. You are younger than your age. You're too old to try new things. You're so young at heart. You're aging backwards. A lot of these comments are based on older frameworks for aging. A lot of people used to die a lot younger than we do, and aging could be something that actually starts a lot older than even my age. And uh, that's what the new science is saying, that we need to take into account that aging is completely different now than it used to be. You don't act your age. Oh, here's a great one. You're too old for that hairstyle. Well, okay. <laughs> You're
You're such an inspiration for staying active. You're like the fountain of youth. And I always thought, I always liked the fountain of youth, just the whole concept of searching for the fountain of youth. And of course, we do know that there's a huge industry for face makeup and facial youth um, inducing things for the skin. Whereas really, that to look really young, it has to do with your diet. It has to do with your belief system. It has to do with the way you think, the way you think inclusively about people, the way you think about uh, laughter every day is very important, and it's very important to exercise a certain amount of activity and s solitude, I think, is very helpful for remaining young. A mixture of solitude and, and, and um, getting together with other people, socializing. And in fact, in just about 20 minutes, a younger person is coming to my house and we're going to take a walk with our dogs. She and I are great friends, and we work together at my former job. She has two boxers, and I have, I don't know if Pearlie can handle another walk today, but we'll let her decide. She's the one who decides her destiny. And little Maso will be so thrilled by her two boxers. So I do have younger friends, and I enjoy them thoroughly. So these statements I was just talking about carry the assumption that certain abilities and certain appearances or behaviors are ex unexpected or admirable based on someone's age. And that re reinforces the stereotypes. I know I have a, a, an 86 or 7 year old neighbor who insists on aging in place. Um, now that's the new thing now, aging in place so that when you make that proclamation, I wish to, to age in place, nobody's going to come and, and demand that you go into a nursing home. I don't have a power of attorney because I don't want people telling me what to do, which they probably wouldn't do until I'm 80. Anyway, my sister-in-law is 83, and she is aging in place, and she's doing very well since the death of her husband, my brother. It's amazing to see how well she has grown and, and her relationships and her love for life. And uh, that's another thing that really will keep us young is waking up every day with a feeling of gratitude for life, loving life. And that feeling alone will help banish ageism. Loving, gratitude, forgiveness and that's another thing we um, often hold on to grievances in any age letting go of grievances embracing gratitude for a love for life is probably one of the best ways to stay young but in our society as we know older people are not treasured for their vast experience their vast uh, understanding of of things we need to listen to their stories I need to listen to their stories I need to tell more stories because I have a lot of stories and um, I think that we can we can have an anti-ageist attitude by exploring within ourselves exploring within ourselves our own ageist attitudes. When we uncover ageism within ourselves, we actually are able to heal the world of ageism. It's an inner job. If you spot it, you got it. And then you have to also explore your inner feelings about lots of things you know if you feel lots of negative attitudes come up within yourself that have either do or don't have anything to do with ageism we have a lot of work to do with our own minds the, a mind is a terrible thing to waste people and we can actually elevate our consciousness by focusing in on elevation of our emotions please subscribe to my channel and i wish you all well
and I hope that we can have affiliations with people from all walks of life, from all ages, and, and love everybody. Peace on earth. Bye-bye.